my, my name is Dr. Lester Hartman. Today we're going to talk about head lice, fears and facts. School is about to begin and things like head lice become a subject soon after school starts as kids seem to develop lice in the fall, particularly preschool or school age kids. Now there's a lot of fears about, about lice and uh, there are also facts. For example, lice cause no health problems. They transmit no diseases and they're not a reflection of hygiene at all. In addition, lice do not hop, they do not jump, and the only way they're transmitted is touching head to head. We all have somewhat irrational fears about lice. In fact, when we start talking about it, often our scalp starts to feel itchy and we start to scratch. And let me show you this in a in much enlarged form is the typical head lice. And this, this lice, uh, louse, is uh, six legs, looks kind of brownish uh, red when it's on a person, and um, it can look pretty disturbing when people are uh, seeing them crawl around their children's heads. Lice in itself um, it costs about a billion dollars a year in treatment and days lost at work for parents because at the present time school systems have what's called no knit policies. In other words, the egg casings that are attached to the hair from these critters uh, remains around and must be removed before a child can go back to school, even though they may not be contagious at all. What the schools do are in conflict with what the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends. A, children, when they discover to have lice, do not have to leave school, but rather a note sent with them to the parents uh, to get them treated immediately. B, that uh, there be no knit policy for uh, coming back um, to school. Where is it looking to scale? If you notice the match head and the penny, that's the typical size of the lice. Um, they feed only on humans, not on pets, and they can only survive for like 24, 36 hours off a human being because they need to have the blood from the scalp. Kind of gross sounding, but that's the case. And here, this is what they actually look like when they're on a strand of a hair. Notice that's a pinhead right next to you. It's about one and a half to twice the times to twice the size of um, the knits. These are the egg casings on the strand of hair. They are almost teardrop shaped, attached on the side of a teardrop to uh, a strand of hair. Remember, they're about a half to one inch above the scalp. Anything above or below that is probably not lice. Remember, your child has had lice for a month before you oftentimes discover it. So he's been going to school for an entire month with it. Oftentimes people mistake this for dandruff. One of the easiest ways to tell the difference is take a piece of hair and try to run your fingers along the length of the hair and try to pull it off. You can't. Dandruff will pull off, but these will not. Now what I'd like to show you right now are the different products that are available in the pharmacies for you to um, treat your child with. NYX has a, what we call a permethrin 1% base. This is a shampoo, and if you see here, the two over here, actually they're cream rinses, not shampoos. After you shampoo, with a non-conditioning shampoo, you put this in for about 10 minutes. This kit probably costs somewhere between 20 and $30. These are the fine tooth combs, as you can see here, that are used. Now there are fancier metal cones with um, double um, teeth in them to pull out the um, nits even better. But these are probably just as adequate right now for you to be able to use to get rid of the nits. Another brand that's in your stores is called RID. RID in and of itself has three products. It has the um, lice killing shampoo which you apply a shampoo the gel afterwards and then it has a home lice control spray 
Some people feel more comfortable with the spray. They can spray their couches, furniture, carpets, and things like that. Remember, you probably can vacuum and get everything out without any trouble. But also, bedding, you can wash at about 130 degrees or put away for 48 hours in like a garbage bag and it will kill off everything. Another more holistic approach has been people using gels to suffocate. Um, Cetaphil, this is a salt water gel that's used. And there are mixed results with this. Some of the Cetaphil one where you dry the hair, you call it a Cetaphil helmet, works well, but it's very difficult to apply all of it on at once and leave it overnight on the hair as well. We will often recommend one more topical uh, product called Ovide, which is a malathion derivative. And you use it as directed um, according to the instructions we give you uh, when we call that in for you. There is an oral medicine called ivermectin that is occasionally used, especially in girls with thick hair. Now remember, these do have some element of resistance as well. But also remember, with an element of resistance, you have to ask yourself, did I treat my child adequately? Did I cover them with the cream rinse or the shampoo in all the hair and long enough? Especially girls with really thick hair can be a bit of a challenge because people can overuse this and we strongly recommend before you constantly re reapply, give us a call. All these products need reapplication and you follow the instructions uh, oftentimes within two weeks of, of the first use. That's to kill off any rest of the um, 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 lice that might still be in the hair that have hatched from the eggs. Remember again, none of these products are 100%. Treating other family members should be based on what you see on their scalps. Any kids under age 2, you should absolutely give us a call before using at all on your child and um, um, we can talk to you about that. Thank you very much.